Well, I'm so happy that the room is filling out, um, that you know, we have so many familiar faces and so many new faces. Um, but we're really, really excited about this lineup. Um, I know I say it every month that the day that the lineup comes together, I'm always doing something embarrassing anyway. But I always get so excited when I get that last email and it's like, this is it! And then I can tell Chandra that we've got it. We've got a lineup. Um, but yeah, I've been um, a fan of these writers for a, at least a few months. And so it's like trying to get contacts Our first reader joining us is Gary Farr. Um, she's from Philadelphia and now lives in Austin, um, where she is an MFA candidate in fiction at the Missioner Center for Writers. Her work is forthcoming and story quarterly, and her favorite ice cream is a chocolate peanut butter swirl. So please give it up for Gary. constantly beating people up. For instance, um, this Puerto Rican kid who we will meet shortly, who works at the Botanica. She's beaten up a strange girl that she met at a concert who she stole money from. And she threatened to beat up her cousin, Fuffy, who is a stripper who provides for her financially and emotionally. And it's kind of like only her real connection in the world. So at this point in the story, she's kind of like screwed everything up. And she has just gotten into a fight with her cousin She's on her way home, really upset. Deirdre tried to breathe deeply as she half ran towards the apartment, but the air tasted spoiled. The Puerto Rican kid was still outside the Botanica, table reassembled. His eyes widened. Hell no. Keep walking, crazy bitch. You got that devil inside you. You need a fucking exorcism. She stopped. Something in her chest quivered, like a magnet, before it leaps towards its pole. You can do that, she asked, panting. He narrowed his eyes, assessing her sweaty, desperate face. My grandma can. Go get her. Hold up, hold up. You got money? She touched the round bulge in her pocket. How much does this sort of thing usually cost? He bit his lip, calculating. 200? I got 150. That'll do. He opened a wrought iron screen door next to the Botanica entrance and shut it behind him. Deirdre stared at her bitten nails, thinking of the tear on Fuffy's nose, the bewilderment in the musician's eyes, the girl's blood on her knuckles. She'd seen so many people's blood on her knuckles. After a few minutes, the screen door opened again. Let me see the money, he said. She handed him the bankroll, which she counted aloud before waving her into the Botanica. Fluorescent lights glared over the same white aluminum shelves they had at the dollar store, upon which oils and candles were organized according to the affliction they addressed. The kid led her down a set of stairs to an unfinished basement that was as clean as the main floor, though less clinical. Three standing lamps gently illuminated the room, and a wheeled buffet table piled with bowls and half-melted candles leaned against one wall. She eyed a large knife resting atop an industrial sink in the corner. Don't be nervous, the kid said. She'll help you. My aunt, too. Deirdre glared at him. But you're going to act all nice now that you got my money? He snorted and shook his head. The stairs whined with the weight of slow footsteps, and the kid jumped up to help the women, although his grandmother didn't seem particularly old or frail. Her red velvet hair was cut in a smart bob, and she wore a DKNY t-shirt with capri pants and Chinese slippers. We do that photo, okay? She smiled warmly. The aunt unrolled a straw mat onto which the grandmother arranged an array of objects. A jug of water, a candle, a bowl of white chalk, a chicken wing bone, a black stone, 
a doll's head. When Deirdre saw the dollar store Barbie head with her tousled, straw-like hair, she backed away. Relax, Mamita, the aunt said. It represents your consciousness. Everything on the mat represents a different part of your life. You understand? Deirdre pulled at the neck of her shirt, feeling hot. Sit down. We're Christians, we go to church, we believe in Jesus Christ. This is all extra credit. Come on, nothing to worry about. The aunt tucked Deirdre's sleeve and she sat on the cushion. What's your full name, sweetie? Deirdre Marie Copley? Spell it. The aunt wrote Deirdre's name in block letters across a piece of paper as the kid helped his grandmother to the floor. She waved her hand in dismissal and he smirked at Deirdre before running upstairs. She set a tool bag of calorie shells on the floor, scooped a handful of chalk, and rubbed it over her hands and between her fingers. She took a second portion of chalk and motioned for Deirdre's hands. Deirdre hesitantly accepted, rubbing it over her skin. She was reminded of baking cookies as a child. The grandmother dipped her hand in the jug and flicked beads of water while muttering words Deirdre didn't recognize. She felt like she was listening in on a secret, and blood thudded in her neck as she thought that Perhaps this was a secret she wasn't supposed to be in on. She turned to the aunt, looking for a translation, but she closed her eyes and began speaking in counter rhythm to the grandmother, posing questions. She invoked Deirdre's name, and hearing herself called among the strange words made Deirdre's skin prickle. The grandmother reached for Deirdre's hands and let the smooth, warm shells spill into her palms. Toss them, the aunt said. Deirdre did as she was told, and the shells bounced and scattered across the mat. The grandmother pointed to each shell and explained something to the aunt, who scribbled in her notebook. Do it again, the aunt said. They discussed in Spanish. Deirdre sat cross-legged, swirling the chalk on the back of her hand. Finally, the aunt said, baby, you have a very dark spirit haunting you. You're lucky to have come to us when you did. Normally, for this type of cleansing, we charge 300. Powerful stuff, hard to do right. But we're giving you a deal. You should make a follow-up appointment, too, but we'll discuss that later. The women led her out the back of the Botanica to a small concrete patio bordered by tall brick walls. The aunt lit two citronella torches, dragged a plastic baby pool to the center of the patio, unraveled a hose, and tossed the nozzle in. We need to cleanse you of the spirit plaguing you. What about my cast? Deirdre asked. Did you not hear me before? This is an emergency. The aunt said over the whistling spigot, take off your clothes, we're all girls. The grandmother emptied a milk jug of torn herbs and oils into the pool, and their scent rose dusky as they hit the water. Deirdre disrobed, thinking of Fluffy dancing down the street, how they were naked together. The water was cold and silky from the oils, and she sunk deeper until it passed over her face, through her hair, and into the humid, itchy crevices beneath her cast. Deirdre listened to the muffled bass of her heartbeat underwater. The grandmother gently pulled her to the surface and began to rub the herbed water into her neck while the aunt took Deirdre's arm. They whispered their occult language as they ran their hands over her legs, shoulders, and stomach. Their hands were strong and smooth like river stones and thrumming with energy. Deirdre gasped for air. The touch of skin on her skin shocked her. She could feel the woman's warmth and holiness absorb into her bones, and the fear that coiled around her muscles was pulled out through her pores. She could feel it unwinding. She could breathe. She could cry. The tears ran hot into her hair, and she let the sobs escape from her open, twisted mouth. The women continued to massage her body as she wailed to the square purple sky overhead. Deirdre howled until she could only expel a rasp. The women pulled her to her feet and hosed her down. Despite the frigid water, her body throbbed with warmth. She felt so aware of her blood flowing and her cells regenerating that she could barely stand. The aunt dried her with a beach towel as the grandmother dumped the pool down, jumped the pool down the drain by the hose. She said more prayers as the dirty water washed away. The two women helped Deirdre into her clothes and combed out her hair. Time for you to go now, baby. It's already a new day, the aunt said. You get more money, you come back this week, okay? Deirdre nodded distractedly. She understand. She understood. She now had the chance to be new. Thank you.